don't nobody want to pay for parking if you're living in a van you have a free rent here but also trying to look for parking every night when you're the type of nomad that road trips is downright exhausting and you just get to a point a lot of times where you're like i just want to be in one spot where i don't have to think about this that leads me to make this video where i came up with 15 different places that you can pay to park that still is not going to break the bank that's not going to be that expensive so you can either do it for like a month or even just a couple days maybe you just want to go for a one night but having these options and knowing where to go and having this list it'll give you a little bit of peace of mind so that you can be like you know what for the next week i don't want to look for parking and that's okay and here are some places that you can park paid that won't break the bank number one shall we just get the obvious ones out of the way you can go to any campground pay for it and stay at any time i did look it up and the national averages for campgrounds is between 15 to 40 dollars a night now of course you're going to have the span of all kinds of different pricing in between and if it's in a popular location anywhere near ocean lakes mountains all these places that are awesome that people want to go to it's going to be more and especially on holiday weekends so keep that in mind there's also going to be campgrounds near national parks as well and sometimes in national parks the only downside to those campgrounds is that they get booked up very quickly sometimes even a year in advance so those can be harder to come by and they're going to be probably more expensive now one of the benefits to having a self-contained vehicle is that if you don't need to hook up then you can look up dry camping and you can just pull into like a tent site some of them have restrictions on not parking in tent sites but some don't so you can just roll up park and then stay there for a few days number two similarly the koas which stands for campgrounds of america i had to actually look that up they're basically campgrounds with more amenities and because there's more amenities they're more expensive so the typical price for a koa stay is around 50 dollars a night or more also what i've heard is that they can be a lot more busy and a lot more kids around so if you don't want to be in that crowd that's like on vacation then you might want to stay away from the koas but other than that if you like amenities then that might be the way to go also along this topic of campgrounds bob wells of cheap rv living has some really good videos about long-term stays in different areas specifically there's a few in desert areas where you could pay i forget what, what it is you have to go watch the videos and you can stay long term so there are places that you can do that where if you want to get off the road for a little bit longer and pay for that you can do that as well number three unattended parking lots when i say unattended i don't mean just random parking lots because in that case you could just park for free but we're talking about paid parking lots that's usually fenced in and they might have a little machine where you can just put in your license plate or put in your spot number and then pay for it and sometimes they'll have 24-hour parking sometimes they'll even have it sectioned off like you know this amount for you know one dollar three dollars five dollars ten dollars for the whole day so if you get park somewhere for a whole day for like ten dollars fifteen dollars that's a lot cheaper than a lot of campgrounds so you could just park somewhere and feel free to just stay there and if there's not an attendant roaming around they probably wouldn't care because you're just dealing with a machine to pay for the parking number four similarly to that underground parking or mall parking or hotel parking even if you're not a guest you can pay for the parking in these garages now the only downside is that a lot of the parking garages have a lower clearance but one tip that i've learned living in my van over the years is that a lot of parking garages their main entrance has a shorter clearance level but if you drive around to maybe the other side or to the back there's usually an, an entrance that's taller usually for things like deliveries or people that have rvs or higher top vehicles check that out make sure you call ahead but you can typically go somewhere like say if this, it's the mall and they charge for parking it'll be like an hourly rate but there'll be a maximum daily rate and in that case you can probably park there now of course a lot of these places might have cameras and if they do and they have security and they don't see somebody getting out if they're really looking they might come tap on your door so take that one with a grain of salt but a lot of places they really don't care especially if there's no patrols and so you could just park there and maybe it's like ten dollars a night it's not very expensive if you're wanting to get off the road number five airports and airport parking rides now airport parking can be pretty costly but if you think about it on like a nightly basis it's cheaper than staying in a hotel typically well depending on where you stay because i think places like lax 
airports are like $30 a day for parking. I don't know, but typically in a lot of bigger airports, they have smaller lots further away from the airport where they shuttle people to the airport. Those park and rides can be $2 a day to $10 or $15 a day. It just depends. Now, some of those are also going to have high restrictions if it is underground or enclosed parking structure but if it's not if it's just like an open parking lot then you just take the ticket go in and park and then you just don't even have to get out now the only downside to the airport park and ride is going to be the noise because you're usually pretty close to the airport so you're going to be hearing air air flights you're going to be hearing airplanes flying all the time so if you don't if the noise doesn't bother you then that might be a great choice i still don't want to pay for parking but you know what you don't have to pay for hitting that subscribe button just hit that and also the notification bell and throw a like on this video. Woo! Now these next three are membership type parking situations and they may not be for everybody, but it could be a great option. So number six is the Elks Lodge. So did you know that if you are an Elks Lodge member, not all Elks Lodges have this, but a lot of Elks Lodges have RV parking and it's typically between 15 to $30 a night. It just depends on the lodge. So sometimes it'll be like a 15 or $20 donation. Sometimes they'll just charge a flat out $25 or sometimes they'll say for hookups, it'll be $30 a night. Or if you just do dry camping, it's $20 a night. So each lodge has their own set prices. Now, in order to become an Elks Lodge member, there's a $75 application fee. And then I believe the dues are $40 a year and you have to be sponsored or invited by a current member that's in good standing. And then you have to have like two witnesses when they like swear you in. I don't know if it's like a secret society, but basically it's supposed to be a good organization and there's not Elks Lodges everywhere, but it could be a really cool thing. If you're interested in joining anyways, you get that perk. Number seven is Harvest Host. Now I know a lot of you have heard about Harvest Host, but let me break it down a little bit further for those that haven't heard about it. So Harvest Host is a service that you pay for annually and it gives you access to very many different parking locations. Now, when you park at those locations, they're gonna be things like wineries, breweries, farms, and things like that. The cost for a Harvest Host membership classic is $99 a year. Now, there was a service called Boondockers Welcome that was separate from Harvest Hosts, and you would pay around $50 a year, and you can park in regular people's driveways that sign up for the service. I think there was thousands of people that had offered up like their driveways and side yards and things like that. Uh, and it was really cool. So you would just put like a little reservation request in and then they would accept it. It's kind of like an Airbnb for driveways for parking overnight. And at a certain point, Harvest Hosts bought Boondockers Welcome. So now they're all wrapped into one service. So you can either stick with Harvest Host Classic, which is $99 a year, or you can wrap all those driveway locations in with the Boondockers Welcome slash Harvest Host package, and that's $169 a year. And then they also have a third package, which is $179 for the year, and that includes they've tacked on over 400 golf courses, and they give you access to, I think, 7,000 dump stations. But for an extra $10, it might be worth it to just get the all access Harvest Host Pass. So I had Harvest Host for a while. I never used it because I like to just spur the moment my parking and I wouldn't want to make reservations in advance because I didn't really know where I was gonna be each night. But the other thing I don't like about Harvest Host is that they do not allow cars, trucks, or minivans. Even though they say you have to have a self-contained vehicle, I believe a lot of people in those categories have self-contained themselves, but that's their rules. They do not allow minivans, trucks, tents, or even pop-up campers. You have to have a self-contained class A, B, or C vehicle. So it kind of bums me out and kind of makes me feel some type of way because I do know a lot of friends that have minivans that are fully self-contained. So I don't like that and hopefully they'll change that in the future. But if you do have a regular van, self-contained or an RV, then I think Harvest Host could be a good option to get you off the road and being able to stay in locations that you know where you're gonna be able to sleep for the night. It could be awesome. Number eight, Thousand Trails. Now this is a membership that could really work in your favor depending on the location that you're at. So the way Thousand Trails works is there's five regions. So you pick one region and it's $570 for the year, which breaks down to about $50 a month. So that is a steal. And once you pay your fee, you don't have to pay 
for your camping spots. So there are a couple downsides to this because there's five regions. So if you're a person that likes to travel throughout the US, you're kind of locked into one region. Now, if you want to add on extra regions, each additional region is $90. So if you want all five regions, it could really add up, but still it's not gonna be that expensive comparatively. Each region has between eight and 23 locations. So if you get the one that only has eight locations, that's pretty slim, but if you're in that area and you like to stay in that area, then it really doesn't matter. And then they have this other add-on that's $370 extra and you get a hundred additional campgrounds and they're spread out throughout different areas. The only thing with that is that some of those locations, you still have to pay like $20 a night, which is still not that bad because these are more popular locations, probably ones by the beach or by lakes and stuff like that. It really depends on where you're going to be traveling. But if you're gonna stay in one region for a season, for example, then it might be worth it to just pay because you're gonna be saving money over the long term. Number nine is amusement parking, and that's what I'm calling it is if you go to say an amusement park, a festival, a concert or the like, this one is a little tricky because it really depends on the parking lot. So when you roll up into one of these festival type places, you're gonna have to pay for parking. Usually it's like 10 to $20. Now, if it's a parking lot where there's a person selling the ticket to park and then they leave for the night, I don't see why you couldn't just stay the night since you've already, you're already in there, you're already parked. They might have a lot that's locked at night, but it's okay if you, if you don't mind being locked in at night, you're still, you still paid for your spot so you can sleep there. Now I've been to concerts where in the parking lot, there were attendants that were guiding people out of the gates and making sure that everybody exited the parking lot. So if that's the type of parking lot that you're going to, you're gonna be in bad luck because they might tow your vehicle or try to with you in it. I've also been to concerts where they have a machine where you just push the button, get the ticket, and then you go in and there's no attendance. So in that case, you could most likely just park there for the night. Number 10, storage facilities. Now this one is a bit controversial because this one would require you to be paying for a storage unit or paying for RV storage already at that facility. Now, if you're already paying for it, that's like your payment of entry, really. But this varies widely because I've heard of storage unit owners or people that work there that are very diligent about making sure that nobody is living in the units or living in the RVs. And then there's other facilities, they just really don't care. You, you go in the gate and you're in there and they just, they don't pay attention to you. So you really have to kind of get a feel for your storage facility and what you think you could get away with. But if you feel like you can just pull into the gate and pull into the RV parking that you've paid for, then I mean, it's not that bad because you're already paying for it. Number 11, colleges. Now this one, again, it really depends on if the area is being patrolled and how involved they are in their security. Pretty much every college, junior college, university on these places, the students pay for parking. So you buy a parking permit at the beginning of the semester. And most colleges have visitor permits. They even have monthly permits and semester permits. Most of the time, these permits are like $30 for a semester, sometimes more, sometimes less. And, and a lot of times you don't even have to go into the college, you could just do it online. So you just register for a guest permit and then you just roll up there and you just park. And if they don't monitor people parking overnight, then you'd be good to go. So it's gonna be a pretty cheap entry to be able to have somewhere to go every night if you're in one location. Number 12 is Airbnb. And believe it or not, Airbnb has a lot of different tent site camping options on their service. A lot of people will rent out their like little patch of land where you could just park there, put a tent, whatever you wanna do. And they're usually about 25 to $30 a night. And if they're in more popular areas, it could be a little bit more but for the most part, it's gonna be around that cost. So you could just go on Airbnb and find a spot. They also do RV rentals. So if you are in a van that doesn't have air conditioner, hint, hint, and you wanna stay in somebody's RV, you could just park your van or your car right next to the RV and just have like a nice little stay. 13 is similar to that, the website or app Hip Camp. And these are for tent sites. So you could just roll up and park your van and stay for the night. And they have many, many different options where you can stay there. Some of them have hookups, some of them don't have hookups. They're all in different locations and it could be a really good way to go. Number 14, and this is one that I definitely would do if I was going to continue living in my van in one location for a long-term period. I would go on Facebook Marketplace 
or Craigslist and I would put an ad saying that I'd like to rent somebody's driveway or side yard. Many people are looking for additional income sources. And if you say, I'll give you $100 for the month, $200 for the month, you have one spot that you can go to at all times in that city, in that location. And sometimes you can negotiate with them giving you water hookup or you know their Wi-Fi or whatever like that. But that'd be something that you can negotiate with somebody, especially if you know people in that area and they're friends or family and you wanna kick them down some cash. That's a good way to spend your money because then you know and you have peace of mind that you have somewhere to sleep every night, same location, and you don't have to really be kind of involved with that person. You could just park and then leave during the day or whatever, and it's a great, great option. And before I get to number 15, I wanna say that some of these are legitimate, like campgrounds, thousand trails, harvest hosts, and stuff like that. The other ones, there's some of them are questionable that you don't know if you're allowed to like really be sleeping there overnight, but you're paying for that. Do not camp there. This is any video that I make about parking overnight somewhere. It's not the time to be putting out your lounge chairs, putting out your grill, you know, doing your laundry outside, cooking and stuff like that. That's not that's not the place for it. Even though, let's just say you put park in a parking garage it and you pay for it, doesn't mean that you have access to camp there. This is not a camping situation. It's a parking overnight situation. All right, so number 15 is getting a ticket. Now this does not sound ideal, but I've known other nomads that they're like, you know what? The ticket here is $40 to park right by the ocean. I'll just take the ticket. I'll take the chance because you don't know if you're going to get a ticket. So you know what? I might get a $40 or $50 ticket, but it's cheaper than a $100 campground at, near the ocean. I mean, it's not a bad way to go because the odds may be in your favor in that case. You might be able to stay five days with no ticket. You might be able to stay, be able to stay longer. You know, you're basically gambling. So, I mean, it's a paid option that's hit or miss. And I've known people that have gotten away with parking in beautiful locations for long periods of time without ever getting a ticket. So it's just something to think about. Now, these are my 15 different options to pay for parking if you don't wanna have to think about finding free parking in different locations every night, but I'm sure there's many more that I've missed. So leave it in the comments. What's your favorite paid place to park while living in a vehicle? Now, I know many of us, myself included, again, do not like to part with my cash. So in the next video, I'll be sharing like 30 different spots that you can park for free that you don't have to even think about. So make sure to stay tuned for that video. Until next time, bye for now. And they might have a little... They are pretty little guard gate but typically wait what 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 and it's typically and it's typically and it's typically in these locations with the self cover self self now the only one of the number 10 what because depending on where so like southwest south we west sir there was attendance Each region has between, what is my mouth doing? Southwest, Southeast, Mid, what is my mouth doing? Mm -hmm.